Hello everybody and welcome along to WOR Season 12. This is PC Tier 2 and we are here for some more Bahrain action <laughs> and just in case you did not get enough of it here at w uh, in real life, well we're going to have some more action here tonight here at WOR. My name is Jess, one of your commentators for this evening and joining me in the commentary box as per usual we got Luke Etheridge. Luke, how are you doing? Thanks, Jess. Good evening to you. Good evening to everyone that is watching at home. I normally leave racing. You can guarantee it's probably going to be a bit more exciting than what happens in real life. I'm not sure if I can make that guarantee after the bombing Grand Prix that we had today. Hopefully, though, we do get some fantastic action. We've got a full grid of 20 cars. Alternate strategies always powerful around here in Bahrain. There tends to be quite a lot of safety cars as well definitely in races i've commentated around here so it should be some fantastic racing yeah exactly and if you missed last week's race around monza as well it was ca quite chaotic to say the least and we didn't know which strategy was the right one the rain came unexpectedly towards the end of the race and the people who were on the dry strategy they stayed on the dry they did not work out and it was originally one of our reserve drivers that took the win but he got some penalties for cutting the scari so it was leonard in the alfa romeo taking his second podium in a row and his first win in wr as well he probably was expecting it anyway due to someone kind of scary but at least the win is confirmed for him and some, something that he probably wasn't expecting after qualifying low down anyway but he did say he was going for the on strategy last week will he go for the same this week i reckon i reckon a lot of drivers will um if you if you know you've not got the pace to go for pole position you, the smart move would be to try to go for that 11th place but there'll be a lot of drivers going for that as well it, it's always one that works out well around here again though if it's an early safety car it can it can sort of mess things up. It's definitely not got the power that it had on previous games, but it's still incredibly powerful. So I think a lot of drivers, given the fact that we've got quite a quite a big grid as well, probably makes it a bit harder to aim for that 11th position, especially with things being particularly close, we would imagine, tonight. So there's a lot of tactics going to be going on in this session. And already, there's a few cars heading out straight away on the mediums rather than the softs. I can't see anyone. Manages to get in the top 10, though, on a set of medium tyres. I think if you want to start on the mediums, you're going to have to be outside the top 10. Yeah, exactly. And we may as well get into the action at the moment as we've got, yes, a full car grid. What do you expect? And luckily for these drivers, we won't be getting any rain around Bahrain, even though it had the last four letters in the word as well. A bit of information about the track. First used in F1 back in 2004, and it ended up with a certain Defosi team taking a 1-2 with Michael Schumacher taking the win. And uh, spoiler alert, for those of you that did not watch it, you should turn off for about 20 seconds. There was also a Ferrari 1-2 today um, in Bahrain with Charles Leclerc redeeming himself from 2019 shambles, taking the win there as well. So um, history repeated itself again today, and it was nice to see Ferrari doing well here. Will Mark 3-1-3 do well here in the Ferrari as well as the other Ferrari driver too as well. Good to see quite a few new drivers here as well. Actually, we've got one new driver who... Actually, no, he's not a new driver. He's kind of someone who was on the Xbox side for quite a lot. He actually manages the WR Esports team. Well, one of the managers anyway. And it's Matthew Roberts as well, who's from Xbox Tier 1. Quite a lot of drivers that came from the console, and I think it's the right, right time to do it, especially when he's in a tier um, which is not quite top tier yet, but he's, he's, he's one of the upcoming stars. So we'll see how he manages on a different platform, because some drivers managed it, some drivers didn't, but he's, he's not the first one in this tier to do so. So... Let, let's see how, how he could do. He's in the Williams tonight as well, filling in for one of the Williams who is not here. We've got Viter, who's back this week. Jay Vajajo is back as well. We've got Camille here too, um, back uh, racing as well. So, And we've got Harlem Marquis as well, who didn't have a strong result last week. But let's see if he can fight back strong, ready for the race then as well. And this is a very interesting circuit, actually. Quite a few braking zones, in particular towards Turn 10, but this could be a trap where there could be a lot of DRS trains like we saw in real life, but we need to put it into perspective. The cars are more tricky to follow than in real life at the moment, so I think I wonder if the drivers remember that tonight after watching the real life race. Yeah, I think also you've got that balance on the game. It is a bit tiny, a bit easier to follow, so it's probably pretty similar to what we saw 
in real life where we saw certain cars battling and swapping around and we did it what we didn't see in real life though is a Ferrari getting it wrong coming out of turn number three that is uh, Mark who got his best result of the season well equaled his best result of the season I should say last time around with a fifth place he's on a set of mediums Drake Dempsey goes fastest of everyone on that set of medium tyres interestingly going back to the point we're making about drivers on different consoles Matthew Roberts I think we'll see a lot come onto the PC for the next game because anyone who's not bought a current gen console by that I mean PlayStation 5 Series S or a Series X I think there'll be a massive difference between F1 2022 on the old gen and the new gen so now might be the time that we see a lot of drivers switch over and I think this season's proven that in this league we've seen a lot of drivers that are in the top tier as well that used to be more known for their console exploits last year's console champions I believe both of them Sam Corby who I commentated on he's in the top tier now on WOR on the PC side and it's an interesting one I don't think I sort of sit on the fence whether it's better to go straight to PC earlier on and cut your teeth in the lower tiers or do a good job on a different platform before switching over and Matthew Roberts doesn't really seem to be affecting him at the moment he does go fastest on a 126 193 on that set of soft tires you'd expect to expect Drake's time on a 126 5 on a mediums to mean that when he puts the softs on he'd be able to go faster Yes, I think there's other, other driver, well-known driver that also races on the PC as well. Thomas Von Haar as well. Absolutely incredible driver. He managed to pick up uh, the PC side quite quickly when he moved from the Xbox side. And we may see a certain Xbox Challengers champion on the PC side at some point. Watch this space. I've heard that he's downloaded it on the PC, um, uh, the, the, game, the, the PC version of the game quite quickly. So uh, hopefully he'll be racing on the PC leagues soon. Camille has invalidated, but Morgan Ball has a set of 125.7. And we've got Simon Vita with a 125.6. Apologies if I get this name wrong. I have a feeling I've said it wrong, but who knows? Don't forget, drivers outside the top 10 will get the free choice of tyres. So we will see people try to go for that alternate strategy. Taz, unfortunately, has invalidated his lap. Taz had a very good result last time out as well he benefited from people being on the wrong, wrong tyre strategy he, he timed it perfectly when the rain came as well which helped him gain his best finish of the season then he put into his back after his uh, return to tier 1 last week we'll see what he could do in the Mercedes um, he was looking quite good in the championship already he's purple in sector 2 as you head towards uh, the heavy braking zone of turn 13 and 14 and there's a stroke in Alpha Tauri that's just spun there as well hopefully I didn't get it <laughs> Lenny Papinta's way. So he comes towards the final corner. Let's see what he could do. Um, will he get onto the top of the timing sheets? No, not quite. 125.7. So he's got to get a move on. But only... He's, he's very, very close actually between Morgan Ball and Vita as well. And we haven't seen what Drake Dempsey could do on the soft. So watch out for these guys as well. We haven't seen what Leroy Brown could do in the Ferrari. He's back this week as well after being in Tier 1 as well. So, you know, could be another quite open grid. And... Um, it is an ABS known track, obviously for people with assist, but these drivers run no assist as well, so they don't have that advantage. So this could be the first track where we see quite a close pace advantage between this tier and the other tiers on PC. Yes, certainly. <clears throat> that no assist really does affect you around here. Turn number nine and ten, possibly one of the hardest corners to do on the game with no assist, having to trail break round there and be very gentle indeed. I'm just trying to work out what Marcus Towler did coming out of turn number 13 because he was a long way down the straight when that car was sort of stricken in the middle of the track. I'm not quite sure how you'd manage to hit a wall around there, but shame for Marcus, 127, 168. He's in the top 10 at the moment. He won't be in the top 10 with that time later on. That is a certainty. And it's pretty quiet out of on track at the moment. Most of the drivers are heading towards the pits. One who isn't is Harlan Marquis. He's just making his way up the DRS zone towards turn number four. And those two DRS zones back to back, probably one of the best overtaking opportunities on the game. You can have a go into turn one. If that doesn't work, you can get it done into turn three. If it does work, it gives your rival a chance to fight back, as we saw today. Arguably one of the most powerful DRS zones on the game. Probably only rivaled with the three, three in a row that we see in Austria. Yes, indeed. And remember the battle that we saw in real life with Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen that went on for so many laps in real life. That was absolutely incredible. So I wonder if we see the same today with a certain Red Bull and a certain Ferrari. You never know. The highest Ferrari at the moment is currently sitting in B4. Marcus Tyler has retired. And I'm trying to see where he has retired. He's probably retired in the pits, actually. So that is his qualifying session 
done well he's on the medians but um i think he's gonna probably qualify low down anyway due to other people still yet to set laps Harlan market has unfortunately invalidated but we've got jc who is currently out on track at the moment he won um last season around here the opening race of the season and an interesting stat actually which we'll talk about later on with the tier one guys but for the tier two guys especially the person that went on to win this track race around this track Went on to win the championship. Will we see a repeat itself tonight, the history side of things? Or will the curse be kind of changed a little bit as well? Because JC was looking good around Bahrain on the first uh, race on this game. But uh, you never know. Things have changed. Patches have um, been developed as well. So the cars may be slightly different to what we saw in the first round of season 11. But he's down in 12th. Not ideal, but he's still got a few time to find. It wasn't a representative lap time. Anyway, as he heads towards the next DRS zone as well. Not a prime overtaking spot around here, but we have seen people try to go past in this understeery part of the trial as he head towards turn 13, heading towards turn 14 now as well. He's purple in the middle sector as well, which shows that he's liking his Bahrain form at the moment then. So down this back straight as well, which we've seen in real life people try to overtake there, which is great to see, which shows that um, more cars can follow each other in real life around there and make overtakes without the need of the DRS. So he goes up to the line then. What can he do in the Alpine? And it's pole position at the moment. 125.6, just under a tenth quicker than the Haas car. And I did say he was quicker last season around this track. History might repeat itself, Luke. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Fantastic lap by uh, Jay then. 94,000, so the second faster then Simon Vietar. And Simon, he's been pole position his last two races that he's took part in, but still yet to get a podium. So he'll be hoping for a bit more of a good result tonight. And I think another team that, well, another drive, couple of drivers that will be, is both of the McLarens as Leonard goes up into Saka Blake. Morgan and Drake Dempsey had a great qualifying last time around, but Drake, he was only able to finish seventh place in the end. And Morgan only able to finish in ninth. Drake still leads the championship on 105 points. It is Lenny in second on 92. Morgan Ball third on 75. Uh, Chandler Saita, who's not here tonight, unfortunately. Camille Sikora, Jonah Martins, Jack Laverty, who's now in the top tier. And Taz rounded out the top 10, unsurprisingly, given the fact they're doing so well in the drivers. McLaren have a pretty comfortable lean in the constructors at the moment. 64 points over Mercedes. Alfa Romeo, a further 54 points back. Then it's Alpine Williams, Aston Martin, Haas, Ferrari, Alfa Tauri and Red Bull still though very early days championship gotta stay still extremely open no one seems to have really taken a dominant hold on it I think obviously Drake and Lenny the only two drivers to have got multiple victories so far this season Drake's the driver with the most podiums and keeps scoring the points but he'll have been hoping for a for a better result last time around we're still yet to see what he can do on a set of soft tyres around here having set that lap on the mediums earlier on. I reckon he can definitely challenge those top drivers as his teammate has invalidated through the final corner. And that, of course, means his next lap would have been ruined as well. So he decides to just dive it straight into the pit lane. Just trying to see who's doing a good lap at the moment. Simon Vietar, he's uh, backed off on this lap. So whether he's doing a second warm-up that we sometimes see, I'm not quite so sure. But Lenny Papinta, he's about a tenth of a second up. So this could be provisional pole for the Mercedes, man. Yeah, it can as well. He's been looking good all season long as well. There has been some races where he's been very, very unlucky, but he's shown his worth in Tier 1 in the races he's filled in as well. Hasn't invalidated so far. We didn't see what he was in the middle sector, but I think he's not going to do as bad um, in the final sector, but probably the first sector was where he was the strongest at the moment. So he's going to go up to the line, and yes, I, I, I did. Uh, my calculations were correct. He has... Uh, Backed off and he's into the pit. So I wonder if he wasn't happy with his lap. Leroy Brown on the medium compound of tyres. He's just gone through uh, turn four, five and six. Now we'll see what he could do on his first run. He is yet to set a lap time at the moment. We've got Fritzen who's gone into the pits as well. A lot of people seem to be invalidating on their next run, which is which which is not good. Hazib is on his outlap as well. At least he's not appearing as a dot tonight as well. So it'll be less confusing for us. The commentary is less confusing for you. So the only driver that is on a lap will be Leroy as he heads towards the next DRS zone as well of the turn 12 and heading towards T turn 13 as well. I'm sure that he would want to score high up there as well because he hasn't been able to catch up near Lenny Papinta's pace at the moment because considering both of them were in tier one for pretty much the whole of last season, surely he must be good not to be near where Lenny's 
pace is at the moment, but he hasn't turned up to many of the races as well, so then he was able to capitalise, but... And there's for certain races where he's been very, very good. So the pace is there. He's just got to find the consistency. He's going into the pits. I thought he was going to go up to the line, but he did invalidate um, in the final corner. So there will be this lap invalidated as well. Well, next lap invalidated as well. So that is it then for their final run. It just leaves Hadib and Days Wombus to go on their runs very, very early as well. It could come back to bite them or it could pay off. We shall see. Let's see. Who will be pole um, at the end of qualifying at the moment? It looks like JST will be uh, pole position, but Jonah Martin's not that far behind, Luke. Yeah, it is incredibly close. Four, well, five drivers within a tenth of a second as uh, Hasif starts his lap around the Bahrain International Circuit, heading down towards turn number one, heading taking a bit of an earlier turning than I thought most drivers would have liked. Keeps it tight through turn number two, has a massive side through there. Won't surprise me if he backs off this lap, but no, he is carrying on up the hill towards turn Number four, spot that braking zone on the left-hand side. Drift over to the left as far as possible. That's where the endurance track and the outer circuit go off. And then this sequence of corners is normally really high speed. And I think Heisif's realised just getting that lap wrong it is worth backing off and saving a bit of fuel. Maybe saving tyres for a run later on. A lot of drivers, though, don't seem to be able to get multiple clean runs in at the moment. Jay, we saw get that time earlier on. I think it was Leonard's first fast lap. It was Simon's first fast lap. It was Morgan, Lenny. They all did it on their first quick laps as well. It's incredibly close at the top, but we've not really seen anyone manage to get two or three decent laps in a row. And one man I'm still interested to see is our championship leader down in 13th at the moment. We haven't seen what Drake Dempsey can do on the softs. Given track evolution, given the delta between the softs and the mediums, you've got to think he'll be right up there. Yeah, as well. We saw last season as well, and a few people were almost puncturing towards the end of the race with them doing a soft to medium aggressive strategy. And there was a few safety cars and a few of the other tiers as well. And there used to be a point in the F1 game cycles, especially in the last game and the game before that, where it, it was no point being soft to medium. It was a medium to hard will be the fastest strategy. But... They can do soft mediums or softer hards around here quite easily if they manage the tyres right mm. and the heavy braking zone as well. And what has happened there? Sorry to interrupt you, Jess. Days Rhombus has gone straight into the back of David Sunshine. And to be fair, Days Rhombus was on a hot lap. David was not. He should have got well out of the way of that one. And that could be the most surefire qualifying I think we've seen all season. Days Rhombus crashes into the wall in frustration. I can't really blame him for that one. David, just complete lack of awareness from uh, David Zunjaik. Seventh in qualifying. He's having a good qualifying this time around. Next race, he's going to be right at the back of the grid. Yeah, he is, which is a bit of a shame considering uh, what the track is in a few weeks' time, which will be Mexico. And Mexico is quite hard to start from the back of the grid at times. So I think Days Wombers will probably be regretting that at the moment. So we've got Jonah Martins then. He's on his lap. Well, he was on his lap. But, unfortunately, he got his time invalidated. We've also got, I think, the Red Bull on his lap just behind him as well. With, uh, I believe, I'm just trying to see. It, you know, it wasn't Fritz and Fritz is going through turn number one. As David, unfortunately, unsurprisingly, has retired from the session. A bit of traffic heading towards the third set too as well. And, in particular, towards the heavy braking zone of turn 10. So, these drivers have got to move out the way as quickly as they can. But they're all on laps. The only people that are not on laps are Jay Fahaha and Taz. We've got Vaita, who is purple, in the first sector. So, he's looking quite quick as well but we'll see what Jonah Mines could do he's invalidated so I uh, he's probably gonna back off I think I'm almost certain yes he's gonna back off so it's Harlan Marquis who's on a lap as well he's gonna get a bit of a toe actually from Jonah Martins I don't think Jonah Martins will be helping with that toe at the moment I think he will probably move out of the way in frustration that probably may have gained a bit of a tempo or two against the Red Bull driver. So what can he do then? The tier 3 driver comes across the line. In P7, he was purple in that final sector. So that toe definitely did help him. Dre Dempsey up to the line. He's P1. What can his teammate Morgan Ball do? In the other McLaren then, he takes P1 off him too. And we got the Haas driver as well up to the line of Vita. He can only manage P2, but he splits the two McLaren drivers. The other Red Bull driver of Fritzen. Um, he can't improve, unfortunately, either. So, um, uh, he probably may get to go again, actually, in P12. Next comes the two Alfa Romeo drivers. Then, and don't forget, was looking brilliant last week, taking his first race victory of the season. Can he replicate that and get on the front row? 
No, he can't. Only just so P3 at the moment. So he'll be on the second row with Drake Dempsey. So that just leads, I think, Camille, who I think unfortunately has probably backed off. No, he's actually about a tenth quicker in the middle sector. So we'll see if we can find more time as well. Let's hope he doesn't invalidate in that final corner. Up to the line. P7, not a bad lap for him. So unless Taz could do any better, Taz is just going through uh, the... Oh, nope, he's invalidated. So it is Morgan Ball then um, on a pole position with Vita. In P2 there, more and more, what a redemption story that would be after a horrible strategy choice last week at Monza when the rain just got too heavy for him. Yeah, looks like being his first pole, pole position of the season, Taz has invalidated his lap, so he's not going to be improving. Everyone else is just making their way into the pit, so it's the first pole of the season for Morgan Ball. Simon Viettar, third front row start in a row. Can he finally get that first pole, that first podium this season that his pace has deserved? And Lennard. I'd love to know what he changed after the Dutch Grand Prix. His results before, well, we'll go for his results before the Dutch Grand Prix, including it. 9th, 11th, didn't take part in Russia, 11th and 7th. He got a third in Canada. He won in Italy. <laughs> He's starting in third place here. And let's have a look at some of the people further down the order. Jay Bahaj in that 11th place, that alternate strategy pole position. Might be one to watch out for in the later stages. He's had a he's had a tough season so far. Only two races and 14th place, which is only finished. The Alpine will be hoping for a much better job this time around. He's been quite busy recently with work as well. And uh, there's certain situations where he couldn't attend. But so glad he's back as well. We'll just wait for Drake Dempsey to go in to the pit. So now we could go through your qualifying results as well. But just look at the gap as well between, I would say, the top 15, just covering under seven terms, the top 14, just under six terms as well. Quite crazy. I'm sure Marcus Towler had more in the tank, but he, ha he had to retire early on. Has if I think days one was earlier. Um, had would have had more in the tank as well. Leroy Brown did not manage to set up a validated lap. Same with Taz as well, probably, but they were struggling a bit out there as well. But at least it's not raining, so they ha will have fresh tyres in the tank. They won't have to worry about the inters or the full wets. But another strong qualifying for the McLaren squad. But we'll see what the owner strategy runners could do. And we will see, especially Lenny as well. Lenny's out of position. We'll see what he could do from PA on the grid. Yeah, and PA, pretty bad position to be around here, obviously, because of how powerful the alternate strategy is. Morgan Ball takes pole. Simon Vietar, 45 thousandths of a second behind in second. Leonard third. Drake Dempsey, our championship leader, is in fourth. Jay in fifth. Aston Martin looking good again in sixth and seventh. Lenny down in eighth. Harlem in ninth. David, he'll still be happy with tenth place, given with how this season's gone. He's only had one point scoring finish. In Imola, he'll be hoping he can, you know, replicate that tonight and hopefully recover from what was a messy qualifying session, to say the least. Yeah, I think it was quite a messy qualifying session for quite a few of the drivers as well. So hopefully they're on for much better luck compared to obviously their qualifying session. Don't forget, you don't score points in qualifying. You only score points in the race. So before we go into the race, let's have a quick look. At the track, then, like we said, first open in 2004, designed by Herman Tilk and built in just 16 months. It cost about $150 million to make. It has three layouts for uh, the Bahrain Grand Prix. It had the endurance layout, which was first used in 2010. The outer layout, which was raced in 2020. And uh, we all remember that Sergio Perez took that win and it was very, very great to see. So the track is 5.4 kilometres long, 15 turns, six, six to the left, nine to the right, and as Luke was saying earlier, three DRS zones, one at the start finish straight, one between turn three and four, and then one between turn 10 and 11. You can see the, the, the recent Bahrain Grand Prix winners, one including Sam Corby for the uh, the uh, PlayStation and Thomas Wanha for the Xbox side, both making to PC. And speaking of Xbox, it was quite a dramatic start to Season 11, where a few cards did not make it um, to have a good start. Actually, they stalled across the line as well. Luckily, there was an uh, anti-stall in the cars as well. I remember the safety car, which caused quite a bit of action as well. We've got Simon Shooter that had a brilliant result and went on to take the victory as well but a few people were caught in that safety car as well and i am expecting quite a few safety cars here as well so without further ado let's get into the race and look at the tires that the drivers are going to be faced with for today so we will look as we get it on our screen in a minute we've got 
people outside the top 10 that have gone for the medium compounder tyres. Everybody else, obviously, they're starting on the soft compounder tyres. <laughs> Luke, are you surprised that they've gone for um, the, the split? Uh, split strategy obviously with everyone on the mediums outside the top 10 surely that would be they want to do mediums to softs I could not be less surprised by the strategies <laughs> everyone has gone it, it, it's what you do if you most tracks on this game if you started outside the top 10 you go for a set of medium tyres especially on a circuit where the alternate strategy is as powerful as this one let's not forget that, that we won't be talking about any of this on F1 2022 as we saw today everyone We'll get a free choice of tyres, so there'll be none of this sandbagging in qualifying. Not that I'm suggesting by how close the times were. Anyone was thinking about that. One team that definitely wasn't sandbagging and definitely would be hoping that they can do this performance in real life. What they managed to do tonight is McLaren. Morgan Ball then on pole position. Vietar second, Leonard third. Morgan's teammate is in fourth place. He's not had the best last couple of aces, has Morgan, but he's still up there in the championship he's still in third place this could be a great opportunity for him tonight and it might be crucial that he stays ahead of his teammate because staying out one lap longer on those soft tires could make a difference and could lose you plenty of time when it comes to the undercourt it should be a fascinating race jess yeah it is there's a low downforce which is required around this track during the multiple long drs straight as well and there are quite harsh curves around here as well to negotiate if you hit those curves in particular towards turn six and seven you're probably going to get you'll send your car to a spin luckily though it's not as harsh as it was at the start of the game so probably we would have easier moves heading towards that turn five and six areas we're just waiting for a few of the cars to make their way onto the grid as we start the Bahrain Grand Prix action um, we were still trying to recover from the Bahrain Grand Prix in real life. And guess what? We got some more action here tonight, um, a few hours later. So anyway, the five red lights are on. Morgan Ball on the right. Simon Viter on the left. And we are underway here at WR Tier 2. Who's got the greatest start off the line? It looks pretty even between both Morgan Ball and Lennar. But Vita uh, is trying to get a good start into turn one. But Morgan Ball tries to cover off very, very nicely indeed. Who else got a good start? Camille's up to seven plays. He's had a brilliant start. Drake Dempsey's trying to fend off JC for four position as well. It's, I think everyone has made it clean off turn one, which is great to see. No spinners in turn three like we saw in real life last year when Nikita Mazepin, Jonah Martins... Is trying to cover off his teammate as well. One of the team bosses are probably shaking with fear at the moment. Luckily, they breathe a sigh of relief there. Jonah Martins is up in into sick position as well. Harlan Marquez gets past Lenny Papinta. Uh, no, Lenny Papinta's trying to think differently and he's trying to go around the inside in a two turn nine and ten. Heavy braking zone, you have to break while you're turning around this corner. And then he put it put into saying thank you very much. And back up into eight position. Sergio gets past Matthew Roberts up to 13th. Hazif gets past Leroy Brown up to 18th. The top, pretty much the top two remain unchanged. Morgan Ball may have not had the best getaway, but he had a brilliant run towards turn one, which helped him increase his lead to about almost seven seconds. Well, yeah, of course, he wasn't involved in all the chaos that was happening behind. Simon actually got a bit of a poor start. That allowed Leonard to get alongside and very late on the brakes from uh, Vietar. That then just slowed them down. He was almost a second ahead of was Morgan Ball before they got to the, before they got to turn number four. But as you can see, Simon's really worked hard on closing that gap. Oh, he's used a bit more VRS on that lap. And now the slip streaming begins. DRS will be activated next time around. First time they'll be able to use it is turn number four. As Lenny Pabinta's looking pretty close here to uh, Kamel Stokova. He's going to try it on the inside of turn number one. That gives him the outside line for number two and the Mercedes muscles his way through on the on the Aston Martin further up the field Leonard and Jay getting very close together last year's champion in this tier trying it round the outside of turn number four he's just losing out so for what looked like a good start from Leonard when he was fighting for second place he's now down in fourth and he's coming under some serious pressure from the Alpine and the Aston Martin behind yeah, he is as well. And don't forget, if you're stuck in that DRS train for that long, you're probably vulnerable to possibly go into the pits early. But as we've seen in real life, the undercut, maybe they want to go for the undercut anyway. And probably a few people will get caught out for this. So it's Morgan Ball leading. Fighter in second. Drake Dempsey in third position. Leonard in fourth. JST in fifth. Jonah Martins in sixth, along with his teammate for tonight, 
Camille Statua. And then we've got Lenny Papinta in eighth, Harlan Market in ninth, and David rounding up your top ten at the moment. They are the ones that are going to be scoring points. All the soft runners staying in the top ten. Our highest medium runner still is Jay Vahaha, who is doing very well to keep the medium runners behind. And I think the medium's cut over, cut over will be very, very soon. So he won't be able to get past the soft runners just yet but he's probably biding his time and waiting to see the opportunity present himself as well. But he's using his uh, overtake quite early as well, so I think he's keen to get past the soft one as ASAP ready. Meanwhile, Lenny Papinta wants to try and get past Camille Statra, heading towards turn number one. He goes to the right-hand side, heading towards turn two, trying to cut off to the outside line, heading towards turn three into the DRS zone, and he keeps ahead of Camille Statra and got that overtake some brilliant stuff and he's already catching up to that DRS train yellow flag that is an Alpha Tari that is a spun that is Hazib unfortunately down in last position they want the Gasly did not do too well in Bahrain in real life and I think that's replicated itself here in WRPC tier 2 yes yeah, like obviously uh, anyone with a Red Bull power train you could argue not doing well in real life as well. Such a shame for Hasef. Not sure if he's got any damage, but he seems to be taking it very gingerly around these first few corners. Whether that's just because of his tyres as well, I'm not sure. Good news for Jake Bahaj and all the rest of the cars on the medium runners. They've stayed in contact with this soft tyre train. They're still going to get the DRM. In only a few laps time, you'd expect those to be the drivers to have the pace advantage. We saw him out on track from 11th place last time around. We have a does Van Tetri, even though he got taken off him in the stewards, could we see someone from 11th or even further back take the victory tonight? I'm not quite so sure. I think what I am sure about, though, is we might be seeing a move for the lead of the race, though. So, Morgan Ball without any DRS. Here comes Simon Vietar. Going to go for it down the inside into turn number one. Should be a fairly straightforward move on the brakes. And that is for Haas into the lead of this race. But Morgan Ball is surely going to have a fantastic opportunity to fight back up the hill into turn number four. The Haas not even bothering to go defensive. Those two swap positions once more. Morgan back into the lead. Simon in second. Drake all over the back of these two. Yes, this is incredible stuff. This reminds me of Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc battling for the top two positions in real life. Probably one of the best battles we've seen in a while. Mark 313 has retired from the race then. One of the Ferraris, which is not good to see. And nice and early as well. Wasn't expecting it to be that early. We have our very first safety car. Very good news for the soft runners. They may think about pitting early, but surely they wanted to go onto the mediums rather than the hard. So... Will they be forced onto the hard tyres? I think they have no other option, but we have seen drivers go on the memes to the end before, but they would have been at 78% tyre life. So I don't know what they go for, but if I was them, I would go on the hard tyres. Yeah, I think hard is definitely the safer option right now. It's a massive gamble you'd be taking going on a set of a medium tyres. Such a shame for Mark retiring from this race at the exit of turn number four. Whether there was contact with another driver, whether he's just lost it, over the curb and spun off into the inside wall. I'm not too sure, but it's not a common place to see drivers getting it wrong around this track. He was having problems in qualifying, let's not forget, with uh, just with traction in general, way down in turn number three. Now we're going to see, are the drivers going to come into the pits? Morgan Ball is in. A lot of drivers, obviously, heading into the pits. And someone who is going to lose out is Drake Dempsey. He is going to have to double stack behind his teammate could find himself dropping down to 4th or 5th behind the order here and it is hard tyres going on both of the McLaren cars makes sense that they're going towards the end what is an interesting choice though Simon Vietar and Jonah Martins have both gone for a set of mediums and Leonard he's going for a fresh set of softs that is a fully committed two-stop strategy from the Alfa Romeo man he's got a very fun race ahead of him well, in real life, we saw people do the two-stop, let alone the three-stop around here, and it worked as well. But maybe Leonard is hoping for a late safety car, or probably he may have not meant to happen to pit the soft tyres as well. It can be done as well, where the driver in-game, um, you select what tyres you want to go on for your first pit stop under the safety car, and then Jeff is like, the game's like, nope, you're going to go on to the, the soft or the hard compound tyres, and... Yeah, that is bad news for Lennon if that's the case. But if he chose that, then fair play. Sometimes drivers got to take risk or take gamble sometimes as well. And if he, if, he, if he has chosen that, he has got to have a miracle of a drive to try and get past a lot of these cars. 
But there's five drivers that have stayed out because they had no other choice. There was a few of the medium runners that went on to the hard tyres. Days Wombus being one of them. Taz, Matthew Roberts as well. So they are committing to the one stop. They don't want to um, be uh, forced to be doing a pit stop under green flags. They just want to take advantage of that free pit stop under the safety car as well. But I wouldn't want to be in the shoes of the top five right now because they will have to do a pit stop under green flag conditions unless there's another safety car and that's all they're hoping for right now because otherwise their strategies are screwed from the very beginning but to be honest they probably weren't predicting a safety car to happen early on in the race they probably were predicting to happen towards the end of the race like we saw in real life and uh, what a crazy final few laps that was oh well Leonard's strategy has just gone completely out the window he's gone straight into the back of Jonah Martins and broken his front wing and he's got severe damage missing that left end plate he's gonna have to come into the pit so I don't, I don't know what he does now does he commit to this fully does he go on for a set of hard tires no matter what he does Leonard is dropping right down to the back of the field I was on board with the Alfa Romeo I don't know whether he was adjusting anything on his wheel just not paying attention we saw that happen in the top tier with Fumos Mikulovic but just completely went straight into the back of Jonah Martins and broke his front wing thankfully Neither of the drivers get a penalty from that. But Leonard's now way down the back in last place. He's on a set of hard tyres. I was about to say he's the one driver who we know definitely has to come into the pits again in this race. We know which top five have to come in. I still think we're going to have to see Vietar and Martins come into the pits as well. They're going to have a very tough job getting those mediums. What, if the safety car comes in on this lap, 23 racing laps? It, it's, it's been done, but it's extremely difficult. Yes, I, I, I'm interested to see how the strategies are going to play out as well. It's wide open here at PC Tier 2. And if people want to take risks in the higher divisions, well, this is a tier to do it, really, because there could be some academy teams, some esports teams that are watching this and thinking, oh, could this be a driver to put onto my team and develop for the future? Because uh, that's what they're looking for. Teams like Shazoo, um, VSR as well, TF10, um, Parnell Racing as well, Liam Parnell's team as well signed up quite a few decent drivers recently as well and they may be looking to add a few more to their roster as well and have a point to prove as well and even wr has a team as well they may look to have add their or tip more drivers to their roster as well so they're saying who, who can handle the pressure and who can't so pretty much everyone's caught up to the safety car so the safety car is in this lap then so what is jay gonna do on this safety car restart we saw the in certain Bahrain races I commentated on recently, there was a few drivers that left it extremely late and he, they got caught out. But hopefully Jay um, doesn't do that. But obviously it's up to Jay when he goes, of course. He is now the de facto safety car. We've got Fritzen in second position as well. We do expect the guys are just pit to swamp these guys, but you never know. that They're only five lap on mediums. We'll see what Jay could do as he heads towards the final corner. Doesn't accelerate fully just yet. He's leaving it nice and late as well. He's got Fritzen almost on the right-hand side. He's going, going, going just before the pit lane entry line, which probably caught a lot of people out, but it's not caught the likes of Marcus Taylor as well. Marcus Taylor's had a very good race start. It's going to be almost three wide and towards turn one. We've got uh, Fritzen trying to defend off uh, the house of Sergio, who's had probably the best restarts out of anyone out of the medium runners, and it's up into P2 as well. Morgan Ball dropped down in descent position. Vita has got past him for the net race lead. Marcus Taylor tries to get move on the inside of turn four and he does it up into p3 excellent stuff as well a few people have dropped position lenny pepinta and drake dempsey going for some moves as well when was the first last time we saw that and we have a spinner that is camille the aston martin down in 18 position what a shame for him like yeah what a shame for him i think drake dempsey went extremely wide out with turn number four i'm not sure whether he made contact with anyone leroy brown has tapped Fritzen into the back ever so slightly. I don't think Fritzen is going to be too happy about that one, but surely the Alfa Romeo is going to get this move done now down the inside into turn number 11 on the slightly fresher tyres. And late Oh, contact! vietar has gone into the back of Fritzen now. He's getting bullied all over the place on this lap. Is the red bull. He was up in second. All of a sudden, he is second last, but it is still Jay Vahar's lead in this race. Great restart from him. Sabrina and Marcus Towler were all over the back of the Red Bull of Fritz. And they're now second and third. Leroy Brown is in fourth place. Vietar and Martins have done exactly what they needed to do on the medium tyres. They have got ahead of Morgan Ball. They've got ahead of Drake Dempsey and anyone else who was in between them. 
now they're in an interesting scenario. Do you push like crazy, knowing that you'd have to pit again and pull on softs at the end, but be supremely fast? Or do you take it nice and easy and try to stretch the required life out of these medium tyres? Judging by the first couple of laps, they're going to be pushing very hard, but it's still obviously a long way to go. And I think unless they break with DRS train to mark and ball behind, they're going to have no choice but to try and stretch these tyres towards the end. It's going to be intriguing for Vietar and Martins. We know the top four have got to come into the pits, of course, and they can now, they might as well just push as hard as they like. They've got no worries about making this medium soft strategy work and their tyres should be good for at least another 10 or 15 laps. Yeah, I think I realised a few weeks ago that I should have gone on to the medium to soft strategy because we saw a few people in um, some other leagues, I do, do that quite nicely as well. So I'm almost certain the top four will probably be inclined to do exactly the same and they're going to be on the softest tyre to the end. Morgan Ball, I think, would probably be a bit deflated after that restart, but knowing that the, the significant tyre delta difference between the mediums and the hearts, it is to be expected. Both the medium runners got past him as well. JST as well. He has had a better restart compared to everybody else. He's in a, I would say, a net P5 out of all of this as well. So he is looking to replicate what he did last season. I believe he wasn't leading that much last season either in um, Bahrain as well. And and he's and he started to get more confidence towards the end of the race. And speaking of that, JST has got a time penalty, three seconds, the second driver to get onto the penalty board. Drake Dempsey being the first driver. We've got Jonah Mines, who was almost going to get the move past uh, uh, Vita um, up into P5, but he couldn't. But DRS is enabled once again then, so we could start to see some DRS overtakes there. We'll see the Haas driver try and make the move towards Turn 4, but with everyone else having DRS around him, that is not going to help him on B. He's going to have to be forced to stay behind. What about behind him as well? Leonard is trying to make a move uh, past uh, David uh, Zunchik and uh, Leonard says thank you very much. That's my position gain. Thank you very much. And he's up into P12. He surely he wanted something higher at the moment but to be honest it's about damage limitation for the Alfa Romeo driver as well. And he's trying to replicate what he saw the two Alfa Romeo drivers in real life um, do as well. It was really great to see uh, uh, Joe, Joe Guan Yu get his first point um, in Formula One ton uh, tonight as well. It was uh, uh, an, uh, a heartwarming moment, I think, for all uh, people watching F1 as well. But Leonard obviously would want the Alfa Romeo driver to uh, win uh, the race tonight rather than be in 12th position. So he's got a lot of work to do, considering he's got a few points already. As we saw on a, a McLaren, go off a little bit. That was Drake Dempsey. That has given the Red Bull a new lease of life on the back of him and I'm sure he may get him into turn one but we are going to start to see some more overtakes in towards the final corner. I thought it was going to be turn one. Nope, it's the final corner as Vita is having a nice battle with uh, the Aston Martin driver as they make their way towards uh, turn one and now Leroy Brown wants to get into the action too as they make their way towards that as well. They're going to be close to get the DRS for all of them as well. Vita's probably going to be the most vulnerable out of these drivers so let's watch Jonah Martins then in that uh, Aston Martin doing quite well on those means but will that survive towards the end I don't know again quite, can't quite get past has to stay in fifth for now but he will be in the next second once the top three go into the pits yeah it's uh, looking good for them at the moment just because Morgan Ball dropped outside of a second once the DRS got activated he's now 1.8 seconds behind and he's too busy fighting off the attentions of JST Lenny Pavinta Drake's caught up a bit. He had a big moment coming through turn number 12 and 13. Last lap around, decided just to lift off and run extremely wide rather than take another track limit warning. Him and Jay are the only two drivers to have any track limits warnings at the moment. But it's looking intriguing. You've got those, obviously, the front the front three drivers and Leroy that we know have got to come into the pitch. You've got Simon and Jonah who have clearly got some supreme pace in their cars and on those medium tyres, but are just sort of getting balked a bit by a few of the cars ahead of him. Simon Vietar almost pushing Marcus Towler through turn number 13, and I think he might go for it. It's a 14 and 15 again. It's not a conventional overtaking opportunity, but that's two laps in a row we've seen that from Simon Vietar, and he now gets himself into third place. Still as for DRS have a car in front, will Marcus Towler be able to fight back though? He's coming incredibly close in the slipstream down towards turn number one. Has he got the grips? to get it done on the brakes into turn number one down the inside of one Haas nearly makes it down Woo! the inside of two Hasses. Sabrino holds on to that position he's now wheel banging with Simon Vietar and you've got Jonah Martins trying to get involved with this one as well he's on the outside line of Marcus Towler two Hasses are still fighting together and somehow it ends up Vietar, Sabrino, Martins and Towler 
for second to fifth place. Leroy Brown still in there as well. I think Morgan Ball had an exciting lap trying to hold off JST. So, out of the top 10 drivers, the only one who had a nice relaxing run from there was our late base leader, Jay Hodge. He's now leading by six tenths of a second. I think he's going to find it tricky though now that he's got Vietar and uh, Martins not too far behind. Yeah, two of the Haas cars fighting for P1 on track at the moment. One Haas car pitted already, one car, one Haas car yet to so stop, but at least they won't get caught in the double sacking. Unlike the McLaren drivers earlier on in this race as well. So that's probably what Sergio is doing, covering off his teammate as well. I wonder what Jay is thinking in the cockpit as well. Will he probably predict that uh, Vita is probably going to go for the move into the final corner? He is looking for it as well. He's weaving, trying to get some tyre temperature, which is quite difficult around this track. He doesn't go for the same move that I was thinking he's going to do, but he's going to use his ERS and DRS to the max from here right now not using too much of uh, his ERS trying to balance it as much as he can we got Leroy Brown trying to get past Marcus Tower this is full position we also got JST and Morgan Ball wanting to join the party too as they go side by side into turn one JST the Reading champion says you're not going to try and win that championship I want to gain as much points as you possibly can as JST is up into seventh position on the road but still in a decent position net wise as well and they're going side by side again in towards turn four this is almighty stuff from the Alpine and the McLaren driver as well Morgan Bull trying to cover off from the inside as well we've got Labour Pinter as well right on the back of this as well Willie he try to go for the move if any of those two make a mistake I think we will see some huge moves going into the next DRS zone as well but my oh my Morgan Bull and JST put on the show there but they're going to lose so much time to the likes of obviously Jonah Martins and Vieta who are on the mediums as well. They may not catch them up when the medium tyre starts to grade. So it's crucial that they get a move on now and try to close the gap to the medium runners. Yeah, it's, it's all about the long game here. Don't want to be... It's okay battling on the DRS straights. That is fine. As long as you don't start battling too much through the corners. If that had carried on really tough through five, six and seven, they might have found themselves losing chunks of time. But that gap is still hovering at around two seconds to the nearest car in front of them. But now's the time you would expect the hards on the McLaren, the Alpine, the Mercedes, the Red Bull of Harlan Marquis, who we haven't spoke about too much at the moment, but he's fourth out of those on the hard tyres, and he's having a really decent race, as here comes JST once again. We've got one Alpine losing a place for second, another one gaining it. JST gets himself up into seventh position. Now can he hold on to it this time around? And I think it is going to be exceptionally hard for him to do so. Morgan Ball's going to try and fight back down towards turn number four similar to what he did last time around he went for the inside as oh Jonah Martins is off and out of the race that is huge that is huge that could change the race quite hugely at the moment he lost his front wing as well that was a weird time and maybe he was tried on tried on track with frustration I don't know and uh, he's parked in turn four the AI it looks like but no safety car which is probably bad news for the ones who are staying on the meme so yes we go green flag running once again, which is a relief to Vieta's ears um, at the moment. 1.5 seconds are clear of Jay Vahaha in second position. Sergio in third position as well. But yeah, Jonah Martins has been unlucky in some tracks as well. Quite a lot of DNFs this season. His consistency has not been the best. He usually gets his best results when he gets on the podium. And then it, after that, if he does not get a podium, usually he either gets no points or DNFs, which is not ideal. But surely he can fight back. So don't forget, next week we're not racing. We've got a break week. So maybe they can spend that extra week practicing for Mexico and trying to obviously recover and recharge their batteries as well. Speaking of battery management at the moment, Lenny Papinta, he's got quite a lot of batteries in his energy storage right now, 82%. So um, he could probably use it to his full advantage to get past Morgan Ball. Morgan Ball almost got past GSC. Lenny Papinta very late on the brakes there, heading towards turn one. We did see another yellow flag somewhere. That yellow flag just gone out of my sight now, so I wasn't sure who that was. But Morgan Ball trying to get um, JST once again as they head towards the breaking zone of turn four. We could see JST try to go on the inside of the McLaren driver heading towards turn five and six as well, but it's quite down here as well, so they're probably not going to go for it yet as Morgan Ball keeps 
P7, which is just what he needed because he is the leading hard runner right now because JST has uh, been overtaken. And don't forget, JST has got a free second time penalty. Same with Morgan Ball's teammate of Drake Dempsey as well. Morgan Ball's got a lot more work to do, I think, than JST to uh, effectively manage his ERS, which is not as difficult um, compared to some other tracks on the WR calendar, but still, it is quite difficult. So we'll see how these two do as well. But... Uh, I have to say, Lenny could be right on to this as well. So don't count Lenny for a potential podium um, in this race so far because he's looking quite rapid in that Mercedes. Yeah, I think Lenny's just hoping for Jay and Morgan to start fighting a bit harder and then maybe he can get himself involved. It could be harder for Jay to get the move done this time around though because Morgan Ball will have the DRS on the back of Marcus Towler. He's quite a long way behind. So it probably won't give him the powerful boost that he'd have wanted. Lenny Pinter is all over the back of JST. I don't think he's going to send it on the inside. Thinks about a move all the way around the outside of turn number one. That's not really going to work. Into two. He's got enough of the car alongside the Alpine, though. And this is going to be a straight drag race up the hill. And the Mercedes engine, as we've seen so often in real life, seems to have the pace. Lenny Pinter gets ahead of JST despite the Alpine having the DRS. And that is Lenny up into seventh place. He's now right behind Marcus Dowler because Morgan Ball has broken away from Marcus. And this is an opportunity for Morgan oh, Ball. Oh, they hit How each other. Sorry to cut you off, JC uh, and Lenny hit each other as well. So I think uh, the Alpine has lost a bit of his end plate somewhere. There was certain damage coming out of the Alpine car and he's gone off the track as well. The driver who won this track last season it's not doing quite so well here as well. He's now been passed by the Red Bull. He's going to be passed by everyone. Oh, that is a shame. JST will have to come into the pits and it will have to be a set of the medium tyres for him, Luke. Yeah, it will. I was just about to say there that Marco Ball, this is a fantastic opportunity for him to try and break away from Lenny and Jay. And he has managed to do that. He's got the gap up to about one and a half seconds now as Lenny Pinter should might be able to even go for Marcus Towler into the final corner. If not, he'll do it at a more conventional overtaking point into turn number one and probably will be ahead a long way before we get to turn number one. Those on the mediums are really going to start struggling now on those tyres. Those on the older mediums, that is. So Jay, Sabrino, Leroy and Marcus Towler. And the other Jay in the LP, JST, though. Such a shame for him that he did manage to get that damage. He's had to... Um, he's going to have to, like you said, go for a set of medium tyres. He's going to be at the back of the field. And any chance of any points are going to rely heavily on a safety car. And a reminder for anyone who's new to WOR who doesn't know what the point system is, it is identical to the real-life Formula 1 with the all-important difference that there is no point for the fastest lap. As further down the order, we've got a big battle going on here between Taz and Matthew Roberts. Those two coming very close to contact as they head downhill into the hairpin at turn number nine. But Taz just stays ahead of Matthew for now. And you've got David Zunjaik not too far back either this is for 11th 12th and 13th yeah i have to say there's still battles going all over the show at the moment it doesn't have to be for the lead it doesn't have to be for pick fifth sixth place it's for the crucial points paying positions as well and obviously matthew bobbers it's been a bit of a learning curve for him he hasn't had much practice around this track on a pc it's a different beast to race around bahrain on pc than bahrain on xbox as well but to be fair his first race on PC, he's doing a pretty decent job as well, trying to keep up with the top guy. He's still winning the bulk of the DRS chain as well, so he'll probably be happy with that. And he can also benefit from Drake Dempsey's penalties too. So I think he's got a lot to learn being on PC, but that is a, this is a good starting point at the moment. Lenny Papinta is saying fast as laps right now, so don't be too surprised if Lenny Papinta tries to get past Morgan Boyne towards Turn 4. Speaking of Turn 1, though, Leonard tries to get past Marcus Towler, who's on 16 lap on mediums. His tyres are starting to die at the moment. He's not had the best of races so far as Leonard who's got past him is up to p7 but for how much longer we're seeing marcus towler trying to get on the left hand side of him in towards turn four it could be the red bull that might want a piece of the action as well but the red bull has got to back out surely because free wide into the chicane here does not work out so luckily harlan marquis decided to not uh, try and go free wide but he's going to go side by side by marcus towler i'm almost certain now is going to be the move done Anyway, for the Red Bull driver as well, sister team versus the main team working together there as well. You can see that the real pace difference between old mediums versus fresher hards is coming into effect now for Marcus Towler. Drake Dempsey also 
gets past him, Taz gets past him as well. Will Marcus Towler just uh, go for the gamble and go for the soft tyres or will he have to wait for a few more laps because he's already losing so much time. But to be fair, the other medium runners who have stayed since the start of the race doing a pretty decent job trying to keep everyone else behind him. The only, the only person that's um, not been kept behind is, is Viator who's still leading. Yeah, he's, he's done a great job, has Simon, to get his way through the field, but he has now got a three-second time penalty, and we have got the first of the medium runners to come into the pits. It is Leroy Brown. 12 laps he's going to have to do on a set of the soft tyres, and remember, he did a few laps under the safety car. He only got 17 laps out of his mediums. Simon viertel has got to get 23 out of his set of medium tyres. That is going to be a bit of a struggle. Leroy Brown comes out of the pits down in 16th position, because of that safety car, because of how bunched up the field is, it's going to be hard, I think, for anyone on the alternate strategy to get a decent amount of points. It is always the risk of going for that alternate strategy, starting on the mediums. If there's an early safety car, you're pretty much stuck between a rock and a hard place. You can pick for the hard tyres, you're giving up the advantage. Stay on the mediums as these drivers did. Yes, you're extremely quick at the end, but you are so far down the order that any chance of getting good points is pretty much out the window, especially when the field is in such a long train as it is in the moment, from 6th down to 13th. But Leroy's the first one to bite, and you'd imagine that means Sergio J and Marcus Towler will be coming into the pits pretty soon, and that will leave Simon Viettar out on his own on that set of the medium tyres. He is currently 4.7 seconds in the lead of this race. More importantly... 5.8 seconds ahead of Morgan Ball. Can he keep that gap above three seconds? And what a medium tyres on the Haas last until the end. It's going to be tough for him as well. But if anyone can do it, Vita could do it. He was so close to the win a few times this season. And what a story would be for the Haas team and himself to get the win here as well. Who knows? Maybe that could be a step closer to his championship charge. More of the medium runners are coming in then. That is the Alpine of Jay. And uh, we've got the other Haas of Sergio as well. And they'll be also on the soft tyres. It'll be interesting to see where they end up to as well. Will the guys have pitted nice and early? Will they come out ahead? Or will the uh, ones with the overcut take the advantage? And unsurprisingly... Leroy Brown is ahead of Jay by 2.1 seconds as well. So everyone has now done their mandatory pit stop. So the Soska gets the end most definitely. JST um, uh, will get to the end as well. Because obviously he, uh, I think he had to pit obviously. Every, every, everyone on the Haas will get to the end. But Vita is the only question mark in, in, in everyone's lit at the moment and it will allow Morgan Ball and Lenny Pepin just to fight because with Simon Vita's penalty if Vita starts to struggle with pace this battle that we're seeing right now on your screen could be the battle for the win yeah they only need to gain a quarter of a second a lap to get within that three seconds and at least one of them is going to have the DRS every lap that is a big big gain around this circuit so if they work together for a bit then they've got a, definitely got a chance of getting within that three seconds but I think they know but if they do work together and they do catch up to Vietar, then it's going to be a lot more difficult. So it's interesting to see how Morgan Ball and Lenny Papinta are going to play this one. I don't think Morgan's going to have too much of a choice as to whether he wants to stay ahead of Lenny on this occasion. The Mercedes is going to streak by the inside. We have to retake the racing line before the braking zone. And that is Lenny Papinta back up into second place. Slightly the lock up and goes a bit deep into turn number two. And Frey, will that give Morgan Ball the opportunity to get back? He's not actually had... The best of exits there, Hester McLaren. And Lenny Pavinta stays in second place. So Morgan, this time, after leading that hard tyre train for so long, is now a bit further behind. And all the chaos that's gone on with Marcus Towler, the incidents that we had with Jonah, I think, crashing out and losing his front wing down the straight. JSC bumping into the back of Lenny. It has built a bit of a gap. Lenny Pavinta and Morgan Ball are now three seconds ahead of Lennart oh! and Hall and Marquist. Camille will make contact with Leroy Brown and go into a spin towards her turn four and into turn five as well. So the other Aston Martin driver, as we're talking about, Jonah Martins League, has also got into trouble as well. We'll see if he's got any damage. I do not think so. But he's dropped way down the order on those hard tyres. What a shame. The Aston Martins in real life not having a good race. Well, the Aston Martins here in PC Tier 2 are not having a good race either. No, they're not. I mean... I think Camille obviously had that incident at the start of the race. He, fair play to him for carrying on. He's in 14th at the moment. But Jonah, he'll be absolutely gutted with what happened. I did see some front wing debris on the run down towards turn number three when he dropped down the order. And I think then frustration 
just got the better of him and he chose to retire out on track. That all important gap with the lead of the Vaso is not really coming down. It's 5.1 seconds with nine laps to go. That is effectively 2.1 seconds. And Lenny Pavinta is doing a better job on his ERS management than Morgan Ball behind him. And Simon Vietar, he's running a bit lower on his ERS as well. So that could be crucial when it comes further down the field. Sabrino now sets the fastest lap of the race as Leroy Jay and Sabrino They've just got to try their best to try and catch up to today's Wombers. I'd expect them to do so. Well, as Murray Walker famously said, catching is one thing, <laughs> overtaking is quite another. But this delta between hard tyres and 13 lap fresher soft tyres shouldn't really be much of a contest. No, as well. It's quite a big difference as well. We see the alternate strategy work well in the past, but... For some tracks, it doesn't work as well. Remember Jeddah as well um, in certain leagues as well. The owner strategy works perfectly. Um, to, I, I can't remember if we uh, um, are going to Jeddah um, in WOR or not. I'll need to double check that. Meanwhile, Days Rombus gets past David Zunchek as he's up into P9 at the moment. And it stands, if Days Rombus could keep the pace up, he'll be on for a, well, a points finish. Uh, this season in Bahrain. He didn't finish last week, but the week before, he got some decent points as well around Canada, and I'm sure he'll be happy to get another maybe double points for the Williams team. But like you said, Luke, earlier, the soft runners are catching with a vengeance, and Leroy Brown's going to try and be the first driver to catch up to these hard runners as well, and the gap is increasingly going down at the moment. Morgan Baldo jumped to the P2 battle. It's not close enough to David Pinter. David Zunchet has decided he's got nothing to lose by uh, pitting and he goes onto the soft tyres and he thought he was going to get swamped anyway. So nothing um, at fault there for him. So he's going into the pits. Meanwhile, Leroy Brown and Sergio are having a nice battle there as well. I think it's heading towards turn four. Yes, it is. We've got Jay Bahaha who's joining in as well. It could be three wide, actually, into turn number four as well. Can they keep it on the road? These three are keeping it on the road. I don't know how they're doing that as they make their way towards turn five and six. This is absolutely crazy as well. Sergio just stayed ahead as well. We thought that Leroy will be the leading soft runner. It is Sergio as well in the the other half who is a leading soft runner as well and he could be on course to be getting some decent points as was their driver as well i believe they won't be scoring points for um constructors i believe but at least they'll be scoring points for themselves if they do end up being a full-time driver who will play good dividends in the championship jay could be fighting back here um heading towards uh turn 11 and 12 but he does not so jay vahaha stays in p12 but sergio he could be on course for getting maybe a couple of positions maybe, but again, catching is a different matter. So he needs to catch and try and pass them at the same time. But speaking of the leaders, P2 and P3, Morgan Ball is trying to close in, but not quite close enough on this occasion. He just can't get past Lenny Papinta, so it's good news for him. And we're watching the gap come down between Vita and Lenny Papinta. So is Vita's mediums starting to die a bit here? I think they've got to be at this point. They're really going to have to start struggling. If you go on board other Haas car, it looks like there is a bit of graining on that front right tyre, about two-thirds of the way across from where the suspension is. You can see that sort of change in colour tone on that front right tyre as he locks up slightly into turn number eight. And that is not what you want to be doing when you've still got six and a half laps to do on these medium tyres. They are going to be in a dreadful state by the end of this race. That is, of course... If you can take them all the way towards the end. It's looking good for Lenny Pinter at the moment. Morgan has not really been able to challenge him. Despite being in the DRS. Despite using a lot more ERS down the straight. He's not able to get close. And this would be Lenny's third win in a season. It would be a second win in a row in the race as Lenny has taken part in. As he did miss the Italian Grand Prix. And I think with Drake Dempsey having that penalty as well. It would allow the Mercedes driver to get into the championship lead. He was in Tier 1 last season. He's done a few races in Tier 1 this season. And performances like this, it won't surprise me if he's appearing in the top tier more often. It might be costing him winning the title, but I don't think he'll be bothered about that too much as the season goes on. He's now effectively within seven tenths of a second of the house of Simon Vietar. I think the best he can hope for is really a podium for our current race leader. Yeah, he, he is losing so much time right now. The tyres are degrading so much on that Haas car. So this is crucial for both Lenny and Morgan to push, push, 
push now at the moment. But speaking of push, push, pushing, Leroy Brown has got past Sergio once again. And he's now your race leader in terms of the soft runners up into P10. And uh, speaking of that, he'll probably stay like that as Sergio has picked up his first three-second time penalty of the race as well, which will allow Jay for her head to get into P11 on the road as well. Will he fight this or will he not? I think he will fight a little bit because he want to try and get past Leroy Brown potentially as well. The other soft runners not making any inroads right now, which will probably breathe a sigh of relief for the other um, hard runners as well. Speaking of Lennon, actually, good recovery drive from him. He is in fourth position. Shame that he's not quite close enough to a podium yet, but again, he is uh, showing, he's proving us right that his form from ever since he got his first podium in Canada um, is definitely, it's definitely promising for him as well. Maybe, maybe the heavens, no, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of a saying, maybe it, things are starting to click for him right now as well and he's starting to improve as well. I would like to see how he does in other leagues as well because probably he's uh, starting to realise a similar thing as well but it might be a high calibre driver as compared to this one but we don't know. But I have to say, Leonard is doing a great job. Maybe the other hard runners could struggle. He's on fresher tyres, don't forget, compared to Morgan Ball and Ali Papenda. So don't forget, Leonard is not out of this race yet, not out of the woods. We've got a yellow flag. That is David Sunchet and Camille having a bit of a coming together. Meanwhile, Taz is trying to get past Drake Dempsey into Turn 1. Taz will look to be on course for getting a second consecutive points finish. In a row, he will take that. He got a podium last week as well. Trying to make sure Drake Dempsey does not get any slipstream at all, which works wonders for the Mercedes driver. Up into sixth place, Luke. Yeah, I, I mean, Drake's just been struggling all race for some reason. Qualified well in fourth. He's one of the few drivers I've seen who's read the RS light is regularly flashing on that car. As oh, Camille's retired before the pace. Safety car! And that is a safety car. That is a safety car. I was about to say he's gone just before the pit lane. And that could cause a safety car. It has done. And this really makes things interesting. At most, we're getting a, a three-lap safety car. It will be coming in at the latest on lap 27. That is how it works on the F1 game. None of this race director people deciding when to come into the pits but this is now very intriguing indeed i mean simon vietar yes this means his mediums will last towards the end of the race but he's going to lose so many places on on penalties because he's got the free second and others hasn't now does he come into the pits and put on a set of soft tires to try and floor his way up the order it'll be interesting to see he's drifted his way around the final corner and there we go simon vietar from the nice race lead comes into the pits lenny Pavinta is in there as well. So will Morgan Ball. They've got, these have got a bit of a gap over Leonard behind. He is coming in. And do you know what it looks like? Pretty much the entire field is making their way into the pits, apart from those soft runners. No, speaking of uh, soft runners, Sergio, he wanted to be on fresh tyres. He's got nothing to lose. He comes in. I think he's got some fresh tyres in the tank as well. Pretty much the only two soft runners that have stayed out in the, in the top lot is Leroy Brown. And Jay as well. We did say, Luke, watch out for Jay at the start of the race. He probably wasn't expecting to be fighting for the race win as well. And with um, him getting no penalties as well, this could work wonders. And Lee Boy Brown as well. I don't think he's won a race at all this season. Again, he's also had appearances in Tier 1 this season. Was in Tier 1 last season as well. He has been a uh, regular occurrence on the Xbox side as well. Remember that win he had at... Monaco, which I, I, was, I had the privilege to watch, not commentate on, but it was amazing. I think Justin Sutton was absolutely happy about that. But I, I, I wouldn't be predicting this result as well, but Leroy and Jay, they're going to be on so much more degraded tyres compared to everybody else. I don't know which way it's going to go. Are they going to hang on to the end? It's not going to be that long before the safety car comes in as well, so the people near the back... I've got to catch up very, very quickly. This is kind of a replica of what we saw in real life, except the safety car uh, pretty much came out a few laps earlier. So, uh, yeah, bring it on. Grab your popcorn. We're in for a crazy end to this race. Who do you think is going to win? I, I'm not going to do anything right now. Everyone's on the soft tyres. It's going to be a sprint run to the finish. Everyone has got the same delta to use as well. It is game on. It's going to be all about pace. Um, until the end of the race. Yeah, it is. I think uh, Drake Dempsey, I'm not sure. He was a bit too far behind, I think, to get caught by the double stack. So I wonder if he had some front wing damage because he's now dropped behind Sergio Sabrino down into 11th place. And he has that penalty as well. It's going to be a big struggle for him 
to get any points from there. It's going to be a big struggle, I think, for Lee Roy and Jay Mahaj to take this victory as well. I did a race yesterday around Australia where I was on four or five lap on soft tyres. A safety car came out. Everyone came in for softs. It felt like hell for the final few laps. It felt like I had no traction compared to everyone else. And Lee Roy and Jay are really going to have a struggle, I think, once this safety car comes in. I can kind of see why they did it if they just copy what everyone else has done that have been behind Sergio Sabrino and you're admitting that's probably the best you're going to do. Try something different. You never know if there's a bit of carnage behind that allows a gap to build up. You've definitely got, a, got an opportunity. But Leroy and Jay really need to absolutely nail this restart. A slight saving grace for them. As we're only going to go to green flag action on lap number 28. There's, there's no DRS for the rest of the race. They're all going to have a full battery as well. So they're all going to be able to fully go for it. There's going to be no fuel worries. We've had two safety cars, so everyone will be able to be safe. Plenty of fuel. In fact, I'm surprised we're not seeing a bit more fuel burning under this safety car period. Heavy, re Heavily revving the engine up, which isn't ideal for the engine temperatures. But as long as you give yourself a bit of time to cool it down, it's no problem whatsoever just to burn that extra bit of fuel, that extra few kilos of fuel that you might have in the car. Because just having that bit less weight could make all the difference here. This is going to be a race that is decided by hundreds, if not thousands, of a second. Leroy Brown leads. Jay in second. Simon on fresh tyres in third. But he has a penalty. I still think it's looking good for Mr. Pinter. It is good because he's the first of the runners who have pitted to not get a penalty. So yeah, he could be on for, I believe, it will be a second win of the season to match Drake Dempsey, which will be good news as well. And don't forget, we're on lap 27, there's going to be no DRS at all for the rest of this race. So it's going to be a sprint to the finish then as well. Surely the safety car's got to come in while well, it has to come in this lap because the game, uh, allow, well, the game has to allow to do two green flag running at the end um, during a safety car because otherwise um, that will go very, very weird as well. Luckily, no one is lapped. Because on this game, lapped cars are not allowed to unlap themselves. At least in real life, they got that right. We're letting all six cars unlap themselves, which made for an interesting racing. So, old tyres versus new tyres. I'm sure the new tyres are going to come out on soft. But can Leroy Brown and Jay prove us wrong? They've got two laps to do it to hold everyone else up. We will have to wait and see. They have got to get the best of restart. Jay has not had the best of restart, which is going to be allowing Ryter to get past. Jay has been got past by a lot of cars already. He's going to try and fend off around the inside into turn number one with Ryter then into P2. Leroy Brown holding on just to P1, but we got the Haas in his mirrors then trying to get past. Lenny Papinta is also looking to get this race victory as well. Morgan Ball's up there as well. It's action, action, action happening everywhere we just don't know where to look tatted up there in p8 as well he probably was guided that the safety car came when it did but he's trying to make up some ground into p8 in towards turn number seven as well don't forget there could be some contact for some of the drivers as well but yeah the guys who stayed out on all the softs the risk unfortunately did not pay off for jay it's working quite well for leroy brown though but i'm almost certain that he's gonna get swamped anytime soon and i think he's gonna get swamped now he does why it does get past leroy up to the race lead on track. Leroy Brown still your net race leader. Oh, wow. Lenny was pinned around the outside. That, that was, I think, move of the race so far. Lenny Bapinta looked so committed. He didn't even have to go for that move. But he did. So Lenny Bapinta up into P2. Yeah, Lenny Bapinta up into P2. Now he's just got to keep it careful. Follow. Follow Simon around. He'll be able to claim a uh, third victory of the season. And claim the championship lead at the same time. Jay's just dropping down the order of it. He's now in... Sixth place, not quite getting that good restart. And you can see Simon Viertel trying to just break the toe, trying to do anything in sort of vain at this moment in time to try and hang on to a podium. Never mind the race victory. Here comes Morgan Ball down the inside then of Leroy Brown into turn number one. And that is McLaren up into third, possibly a net second place as well. It'll be interesting to see whether Leroy lets his teammate Leonard go or tries to defend for what could very possibly be the podium as well. They come round turn number four. For the final time, there's plenty of moves happening in the background. Drake Dempsey trying to go around the other side of Sergio Sabrino. And Ooh. Drake is a championship leader. Everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong for him. And he will definitely be scoring no points today. Back towards the front, though. It is Simon Vietar in first place. And he is setting a pretty rapid pace on this lap. It's not going to be enough for a victory. I don't think it's going to be enough for a podium. But he might still get a top five here. 
To be honest, damage limitation for Vi is her to try and lose as least places as he possibly can. So that's why he's pushing right now. I won't be surprised if he gets the fastest lap. There are no points for fastest lap, don't forget. Leonard gets past Leroy Brown up into P4 as well. So the top four on fresh tyres as well. Leonard is not able to catch up to Morgan Ball for the podium. But still P4 will be an impressive result for him. So heading towards the final few corners then. Vita has driven amazing today. Shame about that penalty as well because that could have been the race victory. So he comes across the line in P1. But Lenny Bapinta takes another win this season and closes up to Drake Dempsey in the championship after Drake Dempsey's poor performance. Leonard gets a podium. Leonard gets a podium, his third podium in a row. He probably wouldn't have predicted that. Vita gets P4. I believe I couldn't see who was P5. I think it might have been Leroy there. But what a race finish there as well. And... The right winner deserves it there as well. Lenny Papinta did not start pole, I believe. So it shows that you don't have to start pole to win the race around there. Even though in real life, whoever started pole won the race. But still, it is Mercedes on top. Three different constructors um, on the podium. We've got one Mercedes, one McLaren and one Alfa Romeo as well. And um, I think Leonard will jump up quite a bit in this championship as well. Due to, I think, he, he, so he got a P... I think it was a P2 in Canada, P1 in Monza, and now a P3 in Bahrain. He's completed the full set, hasn't he, Luke, now? Yeah, three podiums in a row. It's been absolutely fantastic from Leonard. He started third, three pit stops and finished third. That doesn't tell the story of his race because of that extra pit stop under the safety car, of course, dropping him right to the back. But Lenny Papinta, a victory, fastest lap. You get no points for that. You don't see many win at Bahrain from... Eight from the grid. Starting in the lower part of the top ten is normally a death sentence around this circuit. But Lenny Papinta kept it clean. Perfect strategies under the safety car. And he takes the championship lead. Yeah, he does. Let's quickly go through your results. We've got Lenny, Morgan Ball, Leonard, Vita, Leroy Brown, Harlem, Jay Vaharhe, a good recovery drive to seventh. Taz in eighth. Matthew Roberts gets his first point on debut in PC. And Dave Wombus gets the final point in temp. So we've got Fritz and Marcus Dowler. David Zunchek, Sergio Sabrina and Drake Dempsey being your finishers. And then there were quite a few retirements as well. Jonah Martins being one of them, unfortunately. The two after Martins did not get their races very, very well as well. They will need a good recovery in a few weeks' time. I've just about recovered from the real-life race. This race was just as epic, wasn't it? Something about late safety cars at Bahrain. I told you, nearly every single league race I do around here has a late safety car. We saw... One in F1 this year. We saw 2019 there was one in F1. Quite a few times there seems to be a late safety car. And that, in the end, probably didn't have too much of an effect on the on the final result. We knew Lenny was gonna Lenny was looking good for the victory. Morgan was looking good for second. Possibly helped Leonard get himself up into third. And maybe helped Simon Viertov, of course. It'd be interesting to see whether his medium tyres would have lasted on. Still, fourth place, a great result for him. So, so close, though. To claiming that first podium of the season. A fantastic job from Lenny Papinta. His last two races he's taken part in. He's taken the victory. Leading the championship after what was an evening to forget. For Drake Dempsey. He'll just want to chalk that one off. Ideally, I think Drake would be hoping. There was a race next week to try and instantly recover. He's going to have to dwell on it over the break week though. Yeah, he has to as well. It looked like the McLaren fate from Drake Dempsey has kind of repeated just like in real life as well. So hopefully he will be able to improve as the week goes on as well. But it's still quite a long candor as well. So he's still got the chances to do so. So who has been your driver today? Because there's quite a few there, Luke. I think I'm going to have to go Leonard, if I'm being honest. I think just the, a fantastic recovery drive from him. Yes, it was probably his own fault that he went into the back of Jonah Martins under the safety car would have been would have been a very fascinating strategy indeed because we were doubtful whether Viettar and Martins could have got to the end of the race. There was absolutely no doubt that uh, that Leonard was not going to. He'd gone on a set of soft tyres. You've got to use two separate types of dry combine of tyre and you're not getting soft tyres anywhere close to 23 laps around this circuit. So... Would have been intriguing to see that one, but a, a good recovery drive from him, and again kept it clean. Got himself up into got himself up into a third podium in succession. Yeah, and speaking of Leonard, we are going to interview him now as he's just waiting in at the interview room. So we'll drag him in. Leonard, can you hear us? 
Yeah. Leonard, another podium. So you got a P2 in Canada, P1 last week. You completed the set. P3 at Bahrain as well. Well done. That must have been a really good performance. Uh, yeah, it, it felt pretty much perfect. I, this isn't my strongest track, and uh, it started already in qualifying. I, I was really close to my PB, um, which is quite sad because my PB is only a 0.5. Um, oh. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, 0.6 is really decent. I managed to qualify P3. And then in the race, I actually messed up pretty much. Or oh, the game messed me up. It's, I don't know. Um, during the first safety car, I wanted to pit for hearts, but the game put me on soft, so I had to put pit again. So I was P18, and then I had to recover all the way back up to P3 on penalties. Yeah, which I have to say was pretty, pretty good indeed. Probably that safety car helped you a little bit as well. Did you have a think about going for the alternate strategy, or did you think it wasn't that powerful compared to last week? Uh, no, I don't think it was uh, that powerful compared to last week because uh, last week we had rain and uh, in Bahrain yes. you obviously don't really have any rain. Um, yeah, so usually the normal strat is better. Yes, which works well and it showed that you're back to qualifying form as well and uh, you, you produced some brilliant moves as well. You're probably inspired by the moves that happened in real life as well. And uh, do you think after having the break week when we go to Mexico in a couple of weeks' time, do you think you're going to carry on your podium form? I think from your uh, current trajectory, you're probably going to get a P4 around Mexico. <laughs> uh, yeah, I obviously hope to get another podium. Um... I'll be aiming for it because uh, if I can do it at Bahrain, then I should be able to do it in Mexico as well. Maybe I'll need some luck, but uh, yeah, I'll just look for the best. Uh, Luke, do you have any questions for our podium sitter? Yeah, I do. Congratulations on the podium, Leonard. I think even mm. you didn't make it, maybe looked a bit unlikely when you were down to last position during that first safety car. Just wondering what happened with um, into the back of Jonah Martins on, because you said. You wanted to go onto the set of hard tyres. You pitted under the first safety car, but you did have some front wing damage. Can you just tell us about what happened with you and Jonah? Oh, yeah, I, forgot, I completely forgot about it. Um, basically, I was absolutely fuming at the game <laughs> during the safety car, and I just looked at my second monitor and forgot to drive. Uh, so I, I sadly went into the spec. I hope he didn't get any damage or anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, I messed up on that occasion. I know. I think uh, we saw something similar from uh, Miklovic in CR1, not paying attention. Oh. <laughs> You can head into the wall. It's always a dangerous thing to do at 100 plus mile an hour, but I think we've all yeah. been there. But congratulations on the podium. Thank you. Yeah, we'll let you go and celebrate. I don't think there's anyone else that wants to have an interview because obviously Lenny Bipender said that he doesn't want to be interviewed. Don't forget, it's not mandatory, of course, so you don't have to join us. I don't think Morgan Ball will join us, but we'll, we'll uh, speak um, in the meantime. You never know, Morgan Ball could decide to join us very, very soon. So, thank you very much for watching uh, PC Tier 2. It's been a lot of fun with a lot of Bahrain action has happened this week, both in real life and in WR as well. Don't forget, if you like the action so far and want to see some more Bahrain action, there's of course Xbox Tier 1 on tomorrow night at 8pm. We've got PS Tier 1 on at 8pm on on Friday as well if you want to check that out as well as all the other Xbox and PC tiers being streamed throughout the week of course you can follow us on YouTube by clicking the like button and clicking the subscribe button and follow at WR League on Twitter and you can also follow us um, on our Twitter handles as well at JessGames95 is mine and at LukeEffridge95 is Luke so Luke any final thoughts before we wrap up to, to end the stream oh Bahrain's just brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> Plenty of overtaking. You know, there's always, there always seems to be a safety car. I don't know why. You've got the different strategies coming to the play. And Lenny Papinta just pulling off an absolute masterclass, keeping it nice and clean on the penalties. I think even without that safety car, he definitely would have had the pace to catch up to Vietar with the penalty. Whether he'd have got up to him on track is a different matter. He's looking really good. Two races in a row, he's taken part in. He's got wins. Drake Dempsey having another another off day. He'll definitely be hoping that he can come back with some good form after the break at Mexico. Yes, so as a reminder, no race next week. It's a break week as well, which gives us a chance to have a little bit of a chill on Sunday and recharge our batteries. And it also gives the drivers a chance to relax as well and think about the final lot of races 
ahead for the rest of the season. Let's look at the calendar, actually, uh, for the rest of the season. So we're in Mexico on the uh, 3rd of April. I'm not going to be here for the next race. I'll be away um, on holiday with my family as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be having a two-week break. I will be back, though, for Australia, which will be on the 10th of April. Then we've got Portugal on the 17th. Jeddah on the 24th of April. That's where the real life uh, drivers will be going to in just under a week's time. Looking forward to that. We've got um, on the 1st of May, we've got France. 13th of May, we got Britain and the final race in Brazil as well. So second half of the season is going to get interesting. I've been Jess Gaves 95, Luke has been Luke Etheridge and we will see you in just under, well, not a week's time, but just under two weeks' time for the Mexican Grand Prix. Have a good evening and goodbye. Yeah. <laughs>